We will call this meeting to order of the East Hampton Town Trustees. Uh, I'd like to report that the last meeting here was April 12th, 1901. Uh, at, at that time, uh, right after that meeting, the building was sold and relocated to this location. Uh, any more information that you would like to know about the building, Mr. King will provide at a later date. Uh, I'd like to bring the meeting to order now. Uh, are there any guests here wishing to speak this evening? Please come forward. If that's the case, we will get right into our agenda. Do we have to come forward? Yeah. Yes, you do. Okay. I don't think so. This is the Honorable Stuart Ball. I've got a book here of Washington's God, so he did have a God, George Washington. And that's just to cover what I had to say. That's all. Uh, as you know, I was at your people's meeting a couple of months ago, mourning and groaning about the, uh, what the town board did to the, the town trustees and, and essentially wiping out their authority now to control the, the water column of all the harbors in the town. She's saying no. Uh, Gary Wampton doesn't agree with what you say. Uh, the whole thing was done by fraud. Gary Wampton tried the whole thing in court. I don't understand what John Courtney was with. John or anything? I'm back here, Stuart. Oh, but you're way in the corner there, right by the hay rig. Very good spot for you. That's <laughs> 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 uh, so the end of the me you were saying something about this. This document that the town board sent a long time ago, and you guys really did look at it real fine, and there was this and something else in it. None of what you were talking about was presented in Gary Wontrop's papers to the court, as far as I can figure out. His whole thing was that the town trustees were not a government. And he goes back to that case in, in uh, 1973 there in Riverhead Supreme Court, where they totally, totally misrepresented the original Article 36 in the New York State Constitution. And I read you people a couple of months ago, and you people didn't want to hear nothing about it. But anyway, I read it off anyway, just to get the idea how long that that protection of the town trustee rights was <coughs> in the original New York State Constitution. As you know, the other day, this thing came out in the New York Times. I told my eyes a bit there, Diane. I, I, I talked to Diane about it at the, at the American Legion about that this fellow was going to do an article with John Lugana and the jet ski case. And this is it here. Yeah. And I worked with John Lugana. He was at my house quite a few times, a lot of telephone calls. And when I read his article, two things. I, I explained to the, the reporter for the New York Times what happened in 1962. That's when the New York State Legislature fraudulently removed from the New York State Constitution the original 1776 protections of the of our grants and charters, the patents, they call it the contract. And in 1962, the New York State Legislature falsified the ballot for November on a constitutional amendment. And what when the people in November 1962 voted on that constitutional amendment, it was Article 1, Section 15 in the New York State Constitution which validated the uh, grants and charters. What the New York State Legislature did in the descriptions and in the, on the ballot box itself, they described Article 1, Section 15 of the New York State Constitution as pertaining to Indian lands. The reality was, it was the, the protection of the grants that the King of England made to all of us on Eastern Long Island, all our patents, all, all that we all of you people stand for. New York State falsified the ballot in 1962. Real nice folks. And I know what I'm talking about because by, by grace of God, really, I happened to find a person in the New York archives who sent me all the legislative bills 
that the assembly did and the Senate. It has to be a concurring thing between the assembly and the Senate. All the way through it went. It started like, like in 1961, right from the beginning. They had it falsified. Then it'd go to the next procedure up there in Auburn. It'd be still the same fraudulent thing. It's still in there, still in there, still in there. And it got right to the ballot. Now, the next fraudulent deal was in 1973 with, with, the, with the case of Huntington, where the judge, the lawyers convinced the judge that the town trustees had no governmental powers whatsoever. Never did. And Gary Wontraub, I think, was part of that mess at that time. And I hope the town board members are real proud that they have won a case based on fraud. And then when I read the article in the New York Times the other day, I got even hot. Because this is a pet thing of Gary Wontraub, this attorney from, from Albany, about to quit rents. I'll read it all. Anybody read it? You guys must have read all this? Nah. I, I, I have a copy of it still. Anyway, I'll read it off what Gary Wontraub said here. I appreciate your light back there, Diego. I'm not really good at reading by candlelight. Uh, Mr. Wontraub, the town lawyer, pointed out that if East Hampton were to live by the centuries old patents, it would have other obligations, including the annual tax to the king of the sum of one lamb yearly and 40 shillings current money. Assuming East Hampton was not in arrears at the time of the American Revolution, that would amount to 230 lambs and 9,200 shillings the town now owes, payable to Queen Elizabeth. This guy is about as full of it as a Christmas goose. Totally false. More fraud that beats into you people. What happened was, in 1776, when the government's changed, shall you say, we threw the king out and all that. The trustees of Long Island, the, 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 the trustees of the freeholders of the commonality of Long Island, they didn't give a rat's rear if they gave that land to the king of England or they gave it in Albany. They were still paying their quit rents. Albany wanted to device itself of this thing from the King of England. So Albany made a deal, offered a deal to the town trustees of Long Island, and that was in uh, 1786. They came to the trustees, and the trustees agreed to it, otherwise they never would have carried you people, still would have been paying the foot rent. <coughs> what the legislature did, they made a deal that if the trustees of each of the towns of Long Island would pay 14 years in one sum, quit rents, the New York State Legislature would consider it paid in full. So quit rents ended in 1786 with the deal with the legislature. What Gary Wontraub put here in the New York Times is totally false. He falsely, after that, this, this came up in his papers that I read some time ago. The man is a walking He's a danger. He's a threat to everything we stand for. And, and he's a threat to the obligations of every one of you. You guys ain't paid to sit on your ducks. You're paid to maintain and defend the patent. It's a tough grind. Because you got a lot of nuts out there that, that uh, uh, they think this stuff is ancient. It's not. It's valuable right for today. I am, I am just livid at what the town board did to you people. They engaged a fraudulent attorney who, who in a fraudulent manner, won their case. The other night, over here in the hall, we had a panel of discussion here. That was Tuesday night or Wednesday night, I forgot. Anyway, and I was one of the members of the panel, and the question that each of it, it was Huey King, and uh, uh, the mayor of the village, Paul Rickenback, and myself, moderated by, by the Mr. Blunt. Uh, the question put to each of us was, we don't know if you know all those photographs over there, but it's lit. Wonderful photographs up there. And the question was, to each of us individually, was 
how, in a historical manner, do we relate to those photographs over there? I'm going to come my turn. I can relate to a lot of them. And one of the most impressive to me, though I do like my father's pictures all the furs. I was going to get held to the town board about that one too, but my father was a fur trapper there for a long time. Uh, there's a photograph over there of Ferris Talmadge loading potatoes in a railroad car up there at the site. Now, why would that photograph be so impressive to me? Because when I got out of the Coast Guard in 1963, November of that year, Ferris Tabbitt, who now was blind, all right, called me up one day and said, Stuart, I'd like you to come over. I've got something for you. Now, what did Mr. Talmadge have for me? He had a copy of the Dong and Patton. And he said, Stuart, I am giving you this copy. I never had a copy of it. I've known about it, but I never had a copy. Ferris Talmadge gave me a copy of that Dong and Patton. He said, Stuart, these are your townspeople's rights. Defend them to the end. As you can see, I'm standing here tonight. I like to wrap the town board people right to teeth for getting involved in a fraudulent situation, which is very damaging to your trustees because it's making you people make believe trustees because you took away your authority over the harvest under the premise that you have no police power. The constables, part of the patents, were your police power. That went on for centuries. But now it's say, no, you people got nothing. And uh, it's the same with the Southampton Town Trustees. I went to the Southampton Town Trustees, asked them with my fish case to do what you people did. Uh, just all I asked them to do was to certify your patent, which is what you people did. That's all we need. You people say, yes, indeed, this patent is, is our, our living, viable document. Uh, Find us time. The Southampton Town Trustees would not certify and therefore uphold their patent to the fishing, walking, hunting rights in there. So I'm at a dilemma here. Dilemma. I know what Ferris Thomas told me in November 1963. But I'm a hard time getting spread around. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Anyone else from the audience wish to speak? Thank you. Now we'll go to the agenda. Administrator, Diane McNally. Yes. First on the agenda, the approval of the minutes. Um, not on our agenda is the October 24th. Um, there are substantial changes to those minutes that I've been trying to get together for you guys. I've typed it out. I'm going to ask Lori to put it in everybody's box, and then we can okay them if we've had a chance to see them. Um, the minutes of November are okay except for one clarification on page five in regard to Sunset Cove. It indicates one piling is located in trustee bottom land, the one we wanted to remove. Technically, they're all in trustee bottom land. I wanted to change that to uh, one piling is located outside the area permitted to the structure of Sunset Cove Marina, just so that's clear. And that's my only substantial amendment. Otherwise, I'd make a motion to approve. Second. We have a motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Approved. I would make a motion to approve the financial report for November with just one uh, typographical error. The total of the income is listed as 3026. Um, but actually, when you add it up with our balance from last month, the numbers work. It's just a typo. It was a two instead of a one. So with that one change, we have a second. second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carried. Payment of bills. I would make a motion to approve payment of the Verizon bill for 7126, the Star for 112.95, Long Island Coffee for $9.40, and Hamptons Online for $35. Is that a motion? Yes. Do we have a second? Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Paying our bills again this month. I love them. I would make a motion to um, table the bill 
Received from Seacoast Enterprises, three thousand nine hundred ten dollars and twenty six cents for further review. Is that a motion? Yes. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? So carry. Do you want to travel expense now or later? Uh, let's bring it up right now on the payment of bills. Okay. We've received a voucher from Lynn for $348.88. Um, unfortunately, our budget line with the town doesn't include a travel expense. Lynn, do you want to add to that a little bit? or? Um, my horse and buggy needed some hay, so <laughs> I, need, I submitted some mileage expenses only to get to the meetings with Hampton's online and to get to meetings with John Aldred and to get to meetings with the Conic Estuary Program. That's what those um, <coughs> are for. Uh, I need approval to get that out of the trustee budget for this year um, from the trustees that are present here today. Does everyone have a copy of that? It was submitted. Hopefully everyone has one in detail. Um, at this time, I, I think that it's worth the discussion of, since we all use our own horse and luggage, of uh, whether if somebody has a long trip that's for the purposes of the trustees only, whether that <coughs> might be a legitimate expense in the future. Because if so, we should have a travel line in our budget for the town. Well, we sort of was there. We have, a, we have an annual resolution in our resolutions that says good, we can be reimbursed as for the town's reimbursement. But when we went to actually said there's no specific budget line for travel expenses. We have outside professional, subcontract. Um, you know. the, the town had a mileage budget all along for town employees. Uh, through the years, the trustees have not uh, utilize it, if you will. Uh, we have developed our own budget with the town, and now it is not part of it. So uh, Lynn has done an awful lot of work, an awful lot of traveling. Um, my recommendation would be that we uh, pay Lynn through our budget resources, and then we go back to the town for 2007 and try and implement a, a line for travel expenses. Stuart. I just got to wonder, for a long time it struck me odd. The trustees' total budgetary situation was town. It was listed on the conservation. It didn't even have the word trustees there. Is it now listed as the town trustees? or? We, it's yeah. the East Hampton town trustees. Have, yeah. We have our own budget through the town. Very good. Yes. <clears throat> I thought that was really strange. Why, why, why call this conservation? <laughs> Okay, any further discussion? How do we determine the you know, rate of mileage? Uh, the, mi the mileage rate is based off the federal tax refunds for mileage. 2006 is 44.5 cents per mile. It's going up there. Yeah. And the miles that are reported are from MapQuest miles, so they are the shortest distance between. We can do one of three things. We can approve this tonight right here. We can table it, or we can reject it. I do honestly have a few concerns with um, some facets of reimbursement for travel mileage, um, because we all do use our own cars in the course of trustee work. We have always. Um, whether we should have always, always have been reimbursed for that or not, I don't know. Um, so I, I just think if we start now, um, we could have a lot more expenses in the future if each and every one of us wants to be reimbursed for our travel mileage for trusty business. Anyone else? I would suggest we, instead of, uh, why don't we just table this for this evening then? So it doesn't go away. We can discuss that at a further date. Second. Okay. I would so, like to get this resolved before the end of 2006. Okay, we will attempt to do that for you. Okay. 
Uh, we have a motion from Norman. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Table. <clears throat> And lastly, in administrative, we've received a letter from Herzog and Little regarding our, uh, it's not all the audit this year, it's the uh, compilation of our records for the upcoming year. Oh, yep. <laughs> okay, thank you, Diane. Report of the clerk. Um, a couple of things. Can't even see now. Uh, I'd like to entertain a motion to cancel our meeting of December 26th, unless someone wants to come in the day after the uh, day after Christmas. And we would like to make a motion. We want to do that last um, that last motion then by email. Either that, or we'll do it by phone. Okay. One of the two. We don't have a motion to cancel the meeting. So you want to hold it? Cancel the meeting. I was waiting for someone. <laughs> Stephen, do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. All opposed? Thank you. Mr. Lawyer Courtney will put the notice in the local paper for us, please. Indeed, I will. Thank you, sir. Um, Lori Miller Carr, our beloved secretary, she's taken some vacation time. Uh, she's going to be out from 12:22 through 1:2, and believe it or not, it's only costing her three vacation days. What a job, <laughs> huh? That's FYI. Uh, hang on, I can't see. <laughs> um, I had mentioned earlier to a couple of people. Uh, I want to thank Hugh King, our town crier, for helping us put this together this evening. Uh, what I would like to do uh, or attempt to do is make this an annual event. I think this is very worthwhile. Um, sometime, maybe not so much in the middle of December, but like late May, early April, or late September. And I'd like to continue this as a tradition, at least an annual meeting right back here. Um, we have a meeting on January 4th, right here at our own East Campton Town Hall with Gordon Colvin, Larry Penny, Fred Thiel, uh, in reference to our Winter Flounder Grow Out project. Larry, would you like to say a little bit more about that? Um, I will say that I think that uh, the trustee's idea and your idea of uh, reapplying for those permits early uh, was a very good idea because I think that's what uh, brought these uh, people to the table, you know, and uh, so I'm hopeful that um, we can work out something with, uh, with the DEC in this respect, uh, because I have to remind everybody that um, I think about $15,000 worth of uh, flounders went down the drain this year, and that's very sad. You know? mm -hmm. That meeting is uh, 10 a.m. right here at Town Hall on the 4th, so all that can attend, please make a make an attempt. Um, the last thing I have is uh, Wayne and Stu Wayne Town Hall, Town Hall correct. Uh, our clan grow out project, Wayne and, and Stuart Heath are going to get together with someone from Larry's office and they will be released this week uh, and, the, and the clan wraps will be pulled ashore so we don't have the same problems we did last spring. There's one clan wrap on shore right now. Has that one been empty? No. I don't know that answer. No. Those claims froze or done. Okay. They're lost. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's all I have. Okay, we're going to continue now. Uh, committee reports. Fish grow out. We just updated everyone on that. We're going to have a meeting on January 4th. Uh, plan grow out. We just updated everyone there. Um, Jacques, how are we doing with the recreational boats down in Akabana? Hold on, before you get off aquaculture. Um, just an FYI, last, last um, meeting I passed around a picture of the hatcheries um, scallops that they planted out in Northwest Harbor. And I was taking a walk on Hedges Bank near the Cedar Point Lighthouse. 
came across the shellfish that are classic hatchery shellfish on the beach, just a few of them. So they're in the area, which is a good sign. Um, why they're up on the beach, I'm not sure. But you can tell a hatchery with its scalp and that one side of it is dark and the other side is light. And about this size. Uh, we'll continue on beaches. We, as everyone knows, we've had a problem with the recreational boats being left uh, on the beach or up, upland of the beach. Uh, we've been in discussion with the town on what to do with them. We've come up with a policy that we're going, anything left after December 1st, we were going to uh, pull in, apprehend. Uh, how are we doing with that? November 1st. November 1st, excuse me. They, uh, Marine Patrol pulled the boats, the, uh, the boats that were on the beach, and at the last point they pulled them out. About a week ago. Okay, where did they take them to? I don't know. Uh, they took the uh, ones that were um, not in good con any good condition, put them behind town hall to be uh, disposed of in a later date. And the ones that were in, uh, in salvageable condition are um, over by the Marine Patrol building. Okay. For, uh, <coughs> yeah. Bill? I don't know if they checked. Uh, I don't know if they pulled the boats from seven land or not. When did you go? Sunday. Um, they didn't do it. Mr. Taylor? Yeah, um, uh, natural, uh, Andy and myself from Natural Resources went down there and moved all the stakes and the, uh, and the poles that were put in the ground there to, um, without anybody's permission to secure the boats. No, I think we, we agreed to pull any stakes that we'll no, have we to. Yeah, yeah. There's still, in Akamon? Yeah. There's still a few, I guess, that were too hard to get out. Yesterday, I think they went all of them. Oh, okay. Yeah. I checked like three days ago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Going back to Settlers Landing later. Bill, are they going back to Settlers Landing? We, we'll check it out. Okay. Yeah. Like, like we discussed when we were talking with the town and, and Mr. Taylor there, I mean, this is going to become, it wasn't just Akabonic, this is going to be actually a town-wide problem from Havens Beach and, and Northwest Creek, really, I'm, I'm, I'm guessing all the way to Monaco. So uh, it's, this is our first year in doing so, so uh, it's, it's going to take time, but we will eventually take care of cleaning up our beaches. I redid the uh, application <coughs> bill so it's more of a town-wide. Okay. And I also put in here that if you have a mooring permit, you you get a free, you know, you get a sticker for your boat. For a, for a dinghy, for a launch. Yeah, for baymen and other people okay. who have moorings. Um, so I don't know if anybody wants to, you know, look this over and comment on it, but um, I, for the last point, I put a maximum of 50 boats, and for settlers landing, maximum 25 boats, and we just have to make a designated area whether they get pulled up on the beach or put in racks, which have to be built. Mm -hmm. We had discussed racks also, correct. Um, anyone else? Stuart? It's just, it's sort of ironic for me, you got these problems with these boats, and then where are you going to put them if you didn't pound them or whatever? In 1968, when they were dismantling the fish factory down there, I could have got one of those scrap sheds that would have been the one just east of where the present scrap shed is now, that everybody were together. And that was the one that was built out of that thick cement board. It was corrugated cement board. I could have got that scrap shed. I was thinking of the town trustees at the time, even though I wasn't the town trustee. But I went to the town board, and well, first the contractor who offered it to me, uh, for the price of the steel that he would get out of that building, scrap steel, it was $12,000. Now, if you know, them scrap sheds are almost the size of a football field. That's the size of them, they're about three or four stories high. Town board refused. They wouldn't bite with it. And I went to the trustees, the trustees said they didn't have the funding, they had to get the funding from the town board. I bounced back and forth, and the result was, I went back about two months later, told the guy that, that I can't <coughs> pull it off, and they tore it down. Yeah. You know, that would have been a perfect building for these kind of situations. You know, you could put a dragger in there, for God's sake, you know, for the size of those buildings. You know, and, and we're actually looking. So we're actually looking into fencing off some of the area uh, at, at the old Dory Rescue Building downstairs. That big area parking and so yeah. on. 
Uh, I've got Bob Rogers looking into some fencing for us, and we're going to use that as an impound area. We're going to put our pump-out boats and so on down there. Actually, our pump-out boats are there this winter, right. first time. So we're, we're looking into that as a designated area also. That's minuscule compared to Well, I know that, but we've got to start yeah, somewhere. We've got to start somewhere. Yeah. I did try in 1968, I think it was in February 1968 when I... When See, I just, if you I were saw, successful, we wouldn't have had these problems now. That's right. That's you know? right. I give it a go, that's for sure. Okay. So um, the, the question is, do you, should we, you know, keep this and work with this now, or do you want to? Why don't can we make copies of that revised, I, and then we'll? It's, everybody has a copy tonight. They do. The only thing, John. Yes. The one thing you have down here, there'll be a two hundred dollar fee to retrieve your boat. They, if you're going to be, if you're putting people on notice, you should also say plus a daily storage fee, because the t the town charges. When they impound something, they charge. I don't know exactly what it is, but it's a per day fee, and it can build up if they leave it there for a number of days. Since uh, since whatever action we take here it needs to be uh, implemented in the town code, so that uh, we can have enforcement uh, of it next year, the sooner we uh, we come through with it, the better. I don't, I don't think that's a problem. We've been in discussion with the town, and they're, they're behind us 100% on this. So. so do you think that we, uh, if, we, if we review this and discuss this in our first uh, work, work session in, um, in January, do we have enough time to get it in the town code? John? Depends on how fast the town acts on it. Theoretically, sure. Theoretically. But I don't know how, you know, I can't, I don't know how the town's going to react. But isn't enforcement of trustee regs already in the town code? It is, except for when we make an amendment, okay. they don't have to enforce it unless they agree to it. Wait, wait, John. We, remember we looked through and we, they took that out? <coughs> enforcement of the trustee regs? No, yeah, yeah, no. You're thinking in terms of the zoning thing. This is in, this oh. is a, a waterways type thing. Oh, no. Totally different. Okay. But it's different. Okay, sorry. So, no, that's all right. So that would give us three, yeah. Waterways. It's in the waterways code. The waterways code. The waterways code. I think it would be better to get it going. Um, and that way, if it gets maybe the, shot the back. The uh, question I would have, Jack, is, is are these going to be the two areas that we want to try the first year? Or are we considering more areas after this? I think that the, you know, we're going to have to see for the first year and then change it for the mm -hmm. second year. Because things are going to happen. People are probably going to move their boats somewhere else. But we don't. Yeah. Acabonic was designated, if you will, for the first year. Um, and settlers. Yeah, and this yeah. I have both. Right. I put both. Anyone else? Can we just table this then until the session in January? January? If, you if, want there, if everybody wants to take a look at it and give me a couple ideas, that's fine. If not, we can make a motion to uh, approve this tonight. Would you like to make that motion? Sure, I'm making a motion um, to approve East Hampton Town Trustee non-motorized boat shore pull-up application, um, <laughs> but with the addition of uh, a daily storage. <coughs> Do we have a second to that? I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Another permit. We want to make sure we can get that on the uh, our website also. But uh, as a follow-up to this, um, don't we, uh, we, need, we need to put a proposal before the town board mm -hmm. that will go. Now, that, that's a follow-up session, correct? Uh, no, I think we can just submit that right after the first of the year. Okay. I don't think we have to. We'll, we'll just submit it to the town board uh, right after they have their organizational meeting as, you know, as we do, or as we will. Okay? Who writes the language for that? John. John. Lawyer Court. Esquire. Esquire. Alright, I'll shoot my camera one out. Oh. Okay, education. Diane, Lynn, an update? Um, last 
Last week I attended the National Resources Subcommittee meeting of the Conic History Program and Larry Penny was there with um, the Natural Resources Department, um, Lisa, right? Yeah. Yeah. And um, <coughs> briefly their highlights um, were discussed um, that they included the habitat restoration projects that was taking place on the North Fork and the South Pole. Um, Peconic River Fish Passage Restoration and Riverhead Suffolk County Wetland Stewardship Program, which is a new program and it will include um, members of the estuary programs, the state, non-governmental organizations like the Peconic Baykeeper, the county, and the town, um, including one supervisor and one trustee representative from each town. Um, we talked about threat abatement for natural resources, and Laura gave a talk on marsh um, sinking and what's happening to the marshes and wetlands losses in the Peconic Bays with a focus on wetlands from Southampton and East Hampton in a report that was put together by a member of the New York State DEC, Fred Mashaki. Highlighting losses of wetlands in the areas that he is examining. Some of them have been documented. Most of them were documented between 1972 and 2000, 1973 and 2002, showing extensive wetlands losses, indicating that they're um, really starting to focus number one on navigation, you know, dredging areas, and beach restoration projects to hopefully bring those marshes back. Um, and then finally she talked about, and we all talked about, upcoming funding opportunities that are available, and Larry Penny has that information for the town. Okay. Diane, anything? No. Um, Georgia get another ponds, excavation by First Coastal. As everyone knows that First Coastal won the bid about excavating the sand out of Georgica. We were looking to start, I believe, sometime after January 1st. I, Larry and, has uh, put an application in to Chuck Hamilton, New York State DEC, to see if we can amend the amount of sand we can take out of the pond. Uh, we thought it was a great idea. We met La uh, Chuck. Uh, up close and personal, and, and we gave him a verbal on the whole thing, and he, he was the one that suggested we just put an application in to amend it. Um, I've called his office probably four times in the last two weeks. He's called me back twice, and we just haven't touched face, and he, no one can say whether it's okay or not. Um, I spoke to, what's her name, I think it's Mary, Larry, in his office, oh, yeah. Yeah. and she was emailing him again today and I asked her if it's at all possible, try and you know, let me know what decision has, if any, been made, just so we would have some input. I haven't heard. So we're going to continue talking to him. But at wor worst case scenario, we're still going to take 6,000 cubic yards of sand out of there after the first of the year. Really? I heard they started already. It's actually started. Yeah. The pond's full, though. No, well, they're scraping it off the off out of the gut area. Okay, I mean, it, it's okay to start. We've still got that 6,000 cubic yard leeway, if you will. Right. still need to know when they're going to open the pond, if they are, for, to let the Bayman know and duck hunters. All right, Lori, note that down, and I'll call Billy Mack. Um, what, he has to let us know. I, I agree. We, we can't leave the duck line sitting in the middle of that place all the winter. All right. I'll, what, Bill, question, what, what do you try and mend the yardage to? What we got? We went to ten thousand, I think, Larry. Twelve thousand. Twelve thousand. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, if you saw the overhead picture down at the trustee office last year, we took the six thousand out, and it, you know, yeah, was it base dead? probably filled in again this year, I would think. Right, Larry? Yeah, we think so. There's what we're guessing that. So we're we're trying to get more sand out in a shorter period of time. Uh, the one thing that Billy Mack did ask me was, instead of moving it up and down the beach. Right now, as he's excavating, if he could stockpile on the beach, and I, when I hear from Mr. Hamilton, I'll ask that question. Yeah, that's part of the permit too. Oh, it was yeah. okay. I didn't wasn't not aware of that. I knew we increased the amount, but, but that was his thing because if, if he can just spend more time taking the sand out and then move it, uh, things would get done a little quicker. All right. Anything All right. else on Georgica? Uh, 
Harbor Management, Norm and Steve, how are we making out with our <coughs> We have um, our meeting uh, last night. We come up um, with a uh, one nomination, and uh, I bring before the, uh, the Board of Trustees uh, uh, Peter Rendelman as the, uh, the other uh, citizen to be considered uh, nominated to the Harbor Management Committee. Any discussion? I was just going to ask that's my next question. Uh, Norman or Steve, do you think this would be considered a conflict of interest in any way as far as the trustees go? I don't have a problem with his qualifications one bit. I just don't want a problem. Steve? Was that a motion? That was a motion. Do we have a second? I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? <laughs> Just a suggestion. <laughs> All right, so seven yes and zero no. Welcome, Peter. We'll notify him by mail. Make sure he knows when the next meeting is. So that we got. Uh, Larry, you want to help us how we do with the NAPIG and Northwest Crip Dredging? Well, I, I keep looking in the mailbox for the permit. I know. And I know Larry does it too, right? So, yes. Yeah. So. Just, just so everyone knows, the NAPIG one was approved, and we're just waiting for the proper paperwork. And the Northwest Creek is it's kind of mired down in uh, the Northwest, what do we call it, uh, that very long main organization that... Why? Yeah, the line. The CCCC. Yeah. Uh, although, you know, we'll keep working at that. Uh, it, they're trying to, make you know this better than I do, but I was only at the meeting on Monday, I guess, from this group. And they're trying to work with the county to solve a lot of problems, you know, the, the boats, the basin, the little boats, the everything. So that's sort of into that whole negotiation, you know. Although I did hear Brad was there and uh, he did say that uh, Northwest Creek is pretty dead compared to what he remembers it, uh, you know, there's something going on. So we really, I do think that's very important, that dredging thing, you know. So not to age myself, but I think it's pretty bad. I remember when I was there as a teenager, even, and ever since they put the channel where it is currently, it just hasn't been the same. But, Lord. We received a telephone call from someone who was on the waiting list from Northwest Creek. Okay. Said, and he said that someone told him that the county is not going to allow trustees collect fees on warrants there anymore. Did he say who it was? And he, I said, and he said he's going to contact the county and find out. That whole part of this discussion mm -hmm. thing that, you know, I would think that you would have to be part of us, Trustee, um, that um, Mr. Edwards is actually in that, goes to those meetings. Mm -hmm. And I think they wanted, they, there's, the thrust of the meeting is work with the county, maybe the county, they don't want the headache of the, the boat base and all that kind of stuff, so maybe they'll let you guys uh, keep doing what you're doing. You know? yeah. That was that was discussed also. They were, they were thinking about just turning it all back over to us at one point. Yeah, they're not so. going to, it came out to me, they're not going to give it to you. They're not. They're not. <laughs> no. Well, but I suppose we just let the county take care of it. Mm -hmm. You know, if they take care of it like they're taking care of the rest of it, it'll be interesting. Bill, the next meeting we'll be taking that. I will be notified of it next night. After that, I I understand that happens a little too frequently around here, Norm. But going back to that peak, um, assuming that we're going to get that thing, you know, in the mail pretty any day now, we should really. Uh, we talk. We should really um, uh, try to select someone who's going to do it. And we and we, we discussed that at the management meeting last night. The idea of uh, you know of a request for proposal from local contractors, and, and uh, you don't have to pick the contractor that gives you the lowest 
number. You pick the contractor that you think is the best, and but obviously the cost has something to do with it. You know? Right. But if you're going to do that, you should do it pretty quickly, I would think, because right. you have to be ready to gear up and do it, uh, you know, sometime in January. Um, I just wrote it down on my notes here and have a lawyer remind me. I, was, I just penciled in two contractors, uh, Keith Grimes out of Montauk and Pat Bistrian. Does anybody know anybody else who might be able to handle that? We're not dredging, we're excavating that east channel now just so we can get water flow through the, through the winter. Um, uh, Mazineski from the Champions Stevie. Stevie. Diversified. Diversified. I'm sorry? We may want to... You folks are not bound by... No, we, uh, we understand that, Stuart. But we, we may... Pick anybody we, you want. But uh, we, may we may understand to, that. We may want to ask the town to, uh, put something into this, like, outside contract. And if we do, we want to at least... Go through the process. Shoot that away. <laughs> the glare. Oh, it's the glare. glare. Okay. Uh, I'm glad you yeah, like that. Like <laughs> Old business. Application Sat One Marina Ventures. Copy of the memo. Chief Building <laughs> Inspector from Larry Penn. I know when we last talked about this at our meeting, we had questions about the ice break and the wave break, and we sent them a letter. Well, Lori handed it to me tonight, so I have no idea what it says. <laughs> so I'm just going to suggest we table this until our next meeting so we can all have a chance to review this, especially my Three Mile Harbor Committee. Okay. There you go. Yeah, see that? 12 12. <laughs> Application of Sylvia Cornwall. Anybody get a chance to look at that other than me? Um, she's she's been before us in the past, and she has one of those uh, pieces of uh, park property that overlook Hedges Banks. And I've been in there before, and I just went again this past weekend, and I was kind of amazed. She's got one of the only parcels that don't have a walkway going down to the beach. And upland is all fine and good, but once you reach the, the toe of the bluff, it's just like straight down. Uh, it literally, I mean, all the fence and, and the plantings that she has done in the past are gone. Uh, I also saw tire tracks, which tells me people are using that beach. So I'm, I'm going to... Uh, are they not allowed to? No, they are allowed to. And when, when we, if and when we approve this, we want to make sure, uh, I have to review her application, that she is not restricting anyone from using that beach. Uh, she can start her fencing, if you will, at the toe of the bluff and go inward from that point. But one of the goals we have here is to keep the access open to that beach. Uh, another thing I'm going to look at is, like I mentioned, and I have pictures. Um, there's all, all the old snow fence and scraps and everything are just piled there into the dune. I want to make sure that that is all removed when this process takes, takes place. So I'm going to review that application now that I've inspected it. Who else, who else does that? It would be the, the Three, three Mile Harbor yeah, Committee. Yeah, it's because it's Hedges Bank. It's Northwest. Okay, uh, myself and Francis maybe? <coughs> Who wants to look at it? I don't know. She's not I got it. Francis, you you and I got Northwest. So if you want to take it right out there and just if you want to want to go again, just give me a holler. I'll, I'll, I'll know the house. That's why you don't have to look for the number that's not out there. Um letter from George Biondo reference, I believe it's Kane to Webb. Is that right? right. Transfer. Uh, Billy, have you seen this yet? No, I did not. I, I heard about it through the grapevine, but that's all. <coughs> you are advised that the above transfer is completed, and as of this date, come on. <laughs> and as of this date, and in connection 
Therewith, I am enclosing the following two checks, the Bridgehampton National Bank check for $8,060 and a, and a Beyond El Hammer LLP check for $8,060, representing the 2% consideration paid for the house due to the trustee's transfer fee. The, purchase, the purchaser will be delivering the land lease and environmental certificate which have been executed executed to him. All the parties to this transaction are very much appreciative Appreciate the extreme courtesy the trustees extended in approving the transfer so expeditiously. Okay, so, quick quick question. Refresh my memory. Did we approve Web? We did. Yes. I believe, I, yes, we did. I must have been lost that night. No, you weren't there yet. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you were lost. <laughs> <laughs> I think I was losing my mind. Lost you were in front of my mother. Yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so actually we approved that already. That's just the letter confirming and, and sending the 2% transfer to the trustees. I'm not sure if it's all talk to you tomorrow. I'll wait until the end. I'll bring it up if I have anything else. Uh, new business. A letter from Andrew. Beard, Beard. Beard. Beard of the First Coastal Reference Renewal of the Kennedy Permit. That's up along the uh, Wayne Scott slash Georgica Beach. We'll turn that over to the committee for, for review. I believe that is a, uh, hang on, let me, let me go there. It's already lost a lot of its beach. Yeah. On behalf of our current client, Mr. Michael Kennedy, we would have we would like to request an extension of the above reference permit for a dune restoration, it will, which will expire on January 10th of 2007. Uh, we enclosed a $25 fee for this service. So this is one of the first ones we did that had a one-year uh, expiration date on it, and obviously they're not done, and they want to extend it. Um, Have they submitted we, anything in the year? To my knowledge, no. Anybody want to? Anybody feel we have to go look at this again? You do? Okay. We'll go to committee. We'll go to committee. Mr. Ken, isn't he the one that wanted to put one rock back in place? No, that was Randy. That was Randy. Okay. Other side. No. Application of Suffolk County Water Authority. That was interesting. It's this, uh, they're trying to. It's here someplace. Hang on. Okay, this is the one where they submitted an application, it was incomplete, and they also did not uh, submit the application fee. Uh, as everyone remembers, when they did the, the water line down Dumere slash Further Lane, uh, when they wanted to go under, or use our bottom lands to go around the bridge, uh, they had an application before us, but they um, were they informed us that because of the, uh, the the capacity that they have, if you will, that they were not inclined, nor could they pay the application fee. And if everyone remembers, I tried to get the money from Larry Cantwell through the village, and he sent me a nice little letter, nice try. Everyone remember? Yeah. 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 Well, we're, we're at the same vote here now. So what I'd like to do is I'd like to review this application now that it's complete and we'll just take it from to the next step at our next meeting. Uh, so the county. Correspondence. Anybody want to discuss anything on the correspondence? Oh. 
Have I? No. Other than the letter that I got from the Net Natural Nature Conservancy letting us know that it started. And I showed that to everybody at our last meeting. I was down there this weekend, and it looks like they might be done, but I'd like to know if they are because there's a lot of fragmented groups left. All right, I don't <laughs> believe they're done, Lynn, because uh, I know that the, the uh, what do they call it? The Loch Ness Monster. The, you know, hydro, rig. the hydro rig is, uh, was still there, only it was tied up, I believe. And I do know that the, in that letter they said there were two phases. Okay. So why don't we do this? Well, let's contact Larry Campwell, mm -hmm. and we'll ask him to attend our next meeting and give us an update. And like thank him for not letting us know when they were going to start. You know, he told us he, he would let us know, and it didn't happen, right, Larry? Yeah. So I know he told Larry he'd let us know. We were looking at making this townwide project, if you will, and he's frag mighty, depending on how successful this was. Is there? Who put up the Osprey Nest, or was that there? I, just, I think that's always been there. Yeah. It's been there for a number of years. See it a little better now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it does make a difference visually. Um, copy of a memo, Chief Building Inspector from Larry Penny, the Art Barge. Um, Larry, you want to say anything about that? No, just that they, the, their bulkhead is full of pieces, and it turns out that this young man next to me actually had something to do with getting the, the Art Barge uh, there on site. You know, so. Many, many moons. Many, ago. many moons. Long time ago. Okay. That wraps up the correspondence. Does anyone have anything else they wish to bring up? Lynn. Um, last meeting, I <coughs> discussed the fact that it would be nice to see the other trustees and from the different townships of South Old and from Southampton. I've been in contact with both of the clerks from the South Old and the Southampton trustees. They are very interested in the general meeting that involves just the trustees um, for January, and um, we would have a meeting in Riverhead, which is essentially neutral territory for all three of us. And I have corresponded with um, Bob Serrato from Stony Brook University. I have yet to talk to Steve Tattleback from Long Island University to see if they would be interested in me do a presentation <coughs> on shellfish at that meeting. Um, it would be a dinner meeting starting at, say, 6.30 in Riverhead, and I need to get back feedback from everyone here whether a Tuesday or a Wednesday night would be better. Just to make sure it's not a Tuesday night that we have a meeting. Wednesday? Wednesday. No, yeah. Wednesdays, Wednesdays. Well, depends on which Wednesday or which Tuesday. I mean, <coughs> in January. Okay. No, so, yeah. I'll try to yeah, do it on Wednesday. Wednesday. All right. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Anyone else have anything? Keep your briefs. Oh, yeah. Stuart, you've had to flow along enough. I'm heading out the door. One thing I forgot to say is why the pads were written out there. There are one paragraph. Every pad on Long Island is one paragraph. And the reason for it is to make it lawyer proof, which I thought is kind of interesting. Because <laughs> it's, it's right in the town trustee records. They call it an iron bound, iron clad document, lawyer proof. It's in your, in your record book. And the reason is because it's one paragraph, nothing can be separated out of it. And that's how these people, when they drafted these documents, wanted them to be that nobody ever, 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 forever could separate out. And unfortunately, we had a lawyer who could, who could do it. So those people back in the 1600s were thinking way, way ahead when they drafted these documents. They wanted them to be lawyer proof. So apparently in the 1600s, lawyers were a pain in the dupe then. <laughs> Lawyer Courtney, don't let him say that. <laughs> I agree with him about Gary Weintraub being a pain. <laughs> thank you for right, Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. Thank you, Stuart. I was coming to you. John, do you have anything? The organization meeting. When is it? The organizational meeting is going to be January 2nd, 6 o'clock on Bluff Road. Okay. January 2nd? Uh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
I'm sorry, say that one more time. January 2nd. January 2nd, 6 o'clock on Bluff Road, right at our office. John, do you have anything else? No. Diane, I saw you raise your hand. <laughs> I was just going to suggest that perhaps our annual resolutions be um, put in everybody's box lower prior to the end of the year so they have time to look at it. Yeah, I already know. Um, don't, and don't well, forget if you, in the box. It's box. Yeah, okay. If, there if right. you go to the trustee okay. office, just remember, Lori's going to be gone for a long time, so bring your key mm. to get to your mail. Okay? Uh, one last thing, and I, this is something I just got again today. Uh, the Tisha Koi, it's the final on our piping plovers for this year. And some of it is actually very interesting. And you see why we go to the extremes that we do. So that'll be down at the trustee office if and, anyone and wants to see. who is it dedicated to <laughs> inside the first page? I, don't, I haven't gotten that far yet, Larry. Inside the first page. <laughs> piping plover, turn, breeding report. Inside the first cover, inside the cover. Dedicate, dedication submitted Diane. by Larry Penny. No. He's I wrote, I wrote it. Who's Diane McNown. Yeah, right. Oh, cool. There she is. In, in 1995, the town trustee, Diane McNown, was instrumental in organizing a kickoff workshop in order to start the program on the right foot. Congratulations, Diane. Uh -oh. You started all of this. Uh -oh. <laughs> Anyone else have anything? Motion for adjournment. No, I wasn't going to mention that on the air. Okay? I'm going to wait until she turns it off. Motion for adjournment. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. I'll see you in another hundred years.